used to say to me, you only kill what keeps you alive. What does that mean? It means we ate every single square inch of meat off that bear over the next month. Nothing went to waste. That's a pretty fucked up story. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hey guys, welcome back to Spooky Tuesday, a weekly podcast where we're breaking down all of our favorite slashers, thrillers, monster movies, and black comedies on the new scariest day of the week. I'm Sydney Thompson. I'm Monica Height. And I'm Chelsea Duff, and this week we're talking about what keeps you alive. I introduced it a little bit last week, mainly just by saying we knew nothing about it other than it was about lesbian wives. Um, I feel that that was not the worst way to go into it, but I will give you guys an IMDb summary um, just so you have a taste of it. I couldn't come up with my own way to describe it without possibly spoiling too much. Um, The IMDb summary, however, says majestic mountains, a still lake and venomous betrayals engulf a female married couple attempting to celebrate their one year anniversary, which I think is probably roughly what I got from the trailer. I think I knew a little bit more than that. I gleaned a little bit more um, specifics, but I still didn't know like what what genre of horror we were getting into. Did you guys do any further research before you watched? just watch the trailer i didn't even watch the trailer and you know i love trailers um and i wish i hadn't even looked up the imdb beforehand um but i had to actually i looked up the imdb while i was watching it because i could not figure out what anyone's name was at any given point and i was trying to type my notes and i was calling jackie jules and jules jackie and then i was like megan megan and then (laughs) megan (laughs) completely lost completely lost but i will say that that's a really sexy synopsis majestic mountains and a still lake like venomous the, betrayals the venomous betrayals is really what gets me yeah oh very nice very well done <laughs> okay one thing that i did notice and mm-hmm. this goes back to uh jennifer's body as well so the two okay. main characters are jackie slash megan and Julie, and then we have Jennifer. What do all three of those names have in common? J names. J J names. J names. (gasps) And even though Julie is the least problematic of the wives. It's Jules. Well, Jules is short for Julie. They say her full name at one point. Julie, she's not such a Jules though. She she got some moves. So none of them are to be trusted. Uh, I mean you're not wrong but I also feel like um I am hate to hate to do it gonna get called out for it again I and I know where this is going um but I stand every single one of them so (laughs) (laughs) it's pride month baby you're supposed to (laughs) it's pride month baby and like I said when we talked about blood spatter bride you can be Thanos and as long as you're a lesbian I'm still totally willing to hear you out I support <laughs> lesbians. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good, yeah. I mean, this is the film for it. It's. I have to say, with this movie, it was really refreshing to get like a little bit of like coitus going on with our gays here. Um, I wrote in my notes, "Passionate gay kiss in the first minute." That should be the tagline. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks killing is like boobs in the first 30 seconds. This movie is like two gals being pals right off the bat. Mm -hmm. I do like that this movie is set in the Canadian wilderness. That gave me a little giggle. That's innately gay in and of itself. (laughs) Oh, that's a good point. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. that's super fucking gay. A Canadian forest. Uh Literally, like my thing was love the lesbians moving to the Canadian wilderness. (laughs) It's very cottage core of them. Very, very. very. We love that. We love to see it. I also was watching this and I was like, is this Sydney's worst nightmare just being in this oh. area at all here's the thing <laughs> if i was married to the woman that was like let's go to like my father's my grandfather's cabin in the woods i would be like 
no. <laughs> no. I, I will You're never bring you to my great great grandfather's cabin in the woods then. I'll go. I've got one. And you could I'll have go. gotten so lucky, but now, no. I'm no, going with you. You're going to try to murder myself. me, Chelsea. I see Maybe. It in your eyes. I mean, I think it's a risk you should be willing to take, but that's your choice. I'll go knowing full well that you're going to kill me. I'm, <laughs> You'll have a great story. time for the few days before that. Yeah, yeah. And I'll be kind of hip to it, so I won't go near any cliff edge. And maybe I'll be okay. <laughs> Look, maybe. I don't want to spoil anything too soon, but it seems like she had a couple plans up her sleeves. You know what I mean? She loves mm-hmm. to um, she loves to do her research, but also she is she's happy to, to freewheel it a little when she's got to. So don't count anything out is what I'm telling you about our trip to the woods. (laughs) All right. I'll keep my guard up at all times. Amazing. That's what I want. Vigilant. I love a challenge. (laughs) Oh, Jesus Christ. (laughs) Setting myself up for early death. But, you know, if it's by your hands, it can't be that bad. But, but yeah, if you, <laughs> if you've, if you've also been picking up on where this plot line is going, you may have guessed that that whole, uh, venomous betrayal mentioned in the IMDb summary is actually Jackie turning on her wife, Jules, um, and what turns out to be a larger cold blooded, hence the venom snake reference, uh, mm. plot and and it's a whole thing that really goes off the rails because I did know actually going into the movie that one of them was going to turn on the other but I wasn't totally sure which one at first and I also wasn't sure if it was going to be like Jennifer's body-esque paranormal demon shit especially when Jackie breaks up that guitar and starts singing the the oh, demon bloodletting song I fucking love that, that song I was like this is a great song I was just like, a little yeah, psychological setup for her she's hot she can sing she likes it's a demon song I recently when we hit 666 followers I learned about a bunch of new demon songs I didn't know about before I'm adding this one to the playlist Satan says dance by clap your hands and say yeah first then this song right after (laughs) yeah but but like I said I didn't know if we were getting into a paranormal movie or what the deal was I only took notes on like 15 minutes of this movie uh before my dog interfered um but in those 15 minutes I like wrote down some of the lyrics I wrote down there's a demon inside blood let it out oh blood let it out and I was just like this bitch is telling us exactly what's going to happen right off the bat because I was so confident that she was going to like eat her or become her Ooh. or something, especially okay. when that other woman shows up at the cabin. Sarah, who lives in the cabin, lives in the cabin across the lake. It's just visiting the cabin across the lake. They've got I think they family cabins. There. Yeah, I think okay. they live there because Sarah was the reason that Sarah went over to the house was she was like, we've had some break ins recently. And so I went the lights never on in your house. When I saw it on, I came over. And so I'm like, oh, you must be just staring at that house all day, (laughs) every day, (laughs) which uh, knowing what we know now, fair enough. She's keeping an eye out. Um, But yeah, this woman, Sarah, goes over to check on the house. And when she meets Jules and Jackie, who we have solidified their names at that point as Jules and Jackie. She calls Jackie Megan and she's like, Megan, it's been so long. And Jules is like, oh, Megan, has it been that long since you two have seen each other? Like clearly Jules immediately picks up on the fact that uh, Jackie's name is Jackie and this woman is calling her Megan. But I was so sure for approximately five minutes um, that, that Jackie had like, body swapped with this woman Megan or something that she had like eaten (laughs) the original (laughs) Megan and taken over Megan's life Mm. um but the demon's name was Jackie as and and I was like what if we get an old-timey reveal where she's like my name is Jacqueline from the 1800s I don't know I just (gasps) taking a little blood spattered bride taking a little uh Jennifer's body putting them together in one lesbian super film um in the woods and I was ready to work with that you know See, that's what you were thinking. Meanwhile, what I was thinking as someone who didn't know anyone's name yet, uh-huh. she said Megan and I was like, oh, that's Megan. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I didn't know she was Jackie at that point. So I was like, wow. In my notes, I was like, why the fuck is Jules so jealous? 
I was like, don't be jealous, Julie. I wrote, don't be jealous, Julie, or whatever, because I didn't know her name yet either. <laughs> That's and funny. I was like, I, why is she so mad? That This makes me mad. Why <laughs> Jackie slash Megan is allowed to have an ex. I don't understand this. And then I commented a lot about how Jules runs really weird. Um, and so none of it made any fucking sense to me. And then I went mm. to IMDb and I was like, ah, she's not mad that she has a female friend from her past. She's mad that she's been going by a fake name. That's a that's a little more valid. <laughs> I did think she was a little disproportionate unfortunately mad about the name um because people change their names all the time for all kinds mm-hmm. of reasons but I guess if things were normal and not weird Jackie would have just been like oh Sarah I actually go by Jackie now you know what I mean she would have just like dropped it off the bat instead of being like yes call me Megan don't know me as anything other than Megan um and, yeah. and that's what triggered the weirdness I think mm-hmm. no that's that's a really valid point but yeah, I mean, once I got the names down, things were a lot easier. But God, the double J names really didn't help me. We're already bad at this. And like and all of my Jenny notes made in there as well. Yeah. Which, who, I don't even remember Jenny. <laughs> Jenny <laughs> Jenny the old Jenny's friend. The, the friend, the friend. That's true. The, the drowning victim. Um, <laughs> <laughs> poor Jenny too many J names so that's my biggest issue with the the, the script actually sure um, sure fair enough they could have really honorable uh dumb bitch mentioned the writer for putting too many J names into this yeah. script uh, <laughs> big poor, have some Colin diversity <laughs> poor Colin Min- Minihan Minihan is also a fantastic last name. I love it a lot. Assuming we're pronouncing it correctly, but I mean, I I feel 65% confident. Whatever it is, either way, it's nice, and I like it. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, I mean, this movie starts being sus immediately. We get a gay kiss in the first minute. We get a gay sex scene in the first 10 minutes, and we get a demon song in the first six. So, yeah, you know things are going to be bad. Um, I was really glad that it didn't turn out to be a intruder kind of thing. Cause once Sarah showed up in the middle of the night, I was like, this is not what I thought. And I don't want that. And it wasn't. So I was really glad. <laughs> That's true. I saw, um, a joke on Twitter the other day that was like, we're a true crime podcast and in honor of pride month, we've decided to do only hate crimes. And I was like, uh, oh, are our gay <laughs> movies going to veer into that territory? Oh, no. <laughs> If a if a gay person gets murdered every time, is that good representation? Um, but you know what? It's fine. What are you What are you gonna yeah. do? These it's are horror fine. movies. Someone has to die, and for it to be an iconic gay film, probably one of the gay people is gonna die. Yeah. Hopefully, the other gay people will thrive. I mean. Can you thrive in a horror movie? I guess that's questionable. Also, Jennifer was thri- thriving in but Jennifer's body for a died. while, but she thrived for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> the time she was uh, like not alive, she thrived. She was like, amazing. Love that for her. <laughs> if we're not careful, we will do another Jennifer's body episode. Like <laughs> that's very true. And I want to talk about this movie because there is um, a lot to discuss, actually. Yeah. Because after that sus moment Jackie Megan like disappears into town the next day um and Jules is like I would like to do a little mini triathlon where I'm just gonna row myself across the river to go snoop on Sarah and see what the deal is um but she ends up like chatting with Sarah and that's when she's already heard a story about Jenny let me let me lay a little more groundwork for you so she had been talking with Jackie in their little woodsy cabin and she heard this truly fucked up story that she calls out as fucked up where Jackie's like yeah my dad took me and my friend Jenny hunting in the woods and I shot a bear and then I stood there and I watched it die um because my gun was jammed for no other reason it's just because my gun was jammed um I looked into its eyes and watched life bleed out (laughs) literally yeah and then she's like but it was totally casual um and then we ate the bear so actually it was sustainable um but she's heard this fucked up story about Jenny and then she goes 
Jules goes to Sarah's house and is like, oh, is this a picture of you and Megan when she was younger? And she's like, Sarah's like, yeah, and that's Jenny in the middle. And and Jules, I guess, totally forgetting the bear story or probably realistically only fixating on the part yeah. where she watched a bear die and then yeah. ate it for a month afterwards. She was kind of preoccupied with the part where a child version of her wife like killed a mama bear in cold blood and then watched it. It was like, I thought my dad would be proud. <laughs> I thought daddy would be that, proud. <laughs> frankly, should have picked up on that more, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, but Sarah is like, this is Jenny in the picture. And she's like, oh, do you guys still talk to Jenny? She's like, Jenny died two weeks after this photo was taken. Did Megan never mention it? That's suspicious. Megan never mentioned it to you. And Jules is like, okay, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> like, uh, mm. like, no, she never mentioned it. Was she supposed to? <laughs> yeah. And I, I didn't pick up on the vibes that Jules thought, Sarah thought that Megan had murdered Jenny uh, but Jules either. Jules got that very clearly I guess um because she well, confronts Jackie about it well here's the thing there's already been so many weird sus things that have gone down at this point I mean I'm gonna be honest if Adam and I were on a vacation and he thought I looked cute while I was sleeping and then left for an entire day because I looked cute sleeping I would be like I'm going home how fucking dare you <laughs> I miss out on the whole fucking day just because I looked cute I look cute all the time get over it wake me up so we can go get breakfast <laughs> I would be irate so it already would have been over for me but I mean that's a big red flag it's a huge red flag also had the gun part happened yet or was that the shooting the, the practice yes. that happened yet oh yeah, yeah there's yeah, also yeah, that part I'm an incredible shot um because Jules was joking with her and was like your form is wrong your shoulders need to be square and Jackie was like don't tell me what to do and she just shot all three cans perfectly she didn't even have to say don't tell me what to do she the just vibes. the vibes the vibes said that you saw it in her eye she was like yeah. I'm coming I am showing you <laughs> But I did like that Jules basically like was trying to jokingly mansplain how to hold a gun. That was hilarious. I was like, Jules, come on. You fucking missed. Sweetie. (laughs) Sweetie, your your wife is a cold-blooded killer, honey. Honestly, your wife your wife is a literal serial killer and you just don't know it yet. (laughs) Yeah, just wait a few minutes. Wait but a anyway. few minutes and <laughs> and it will become abundantly clear. Abundantly. Well, abundantly may be a strong considering this is kind of like a slow burn reveal because even after that first scene, which I will uh, hand the reins off to somebody else if they'd like to describe it, but even after that first scene where things really get turned on its head, you don't realize quite how deep you're in it, it uh, until it like continues to snowball off off the chain. It is rather off the chain. (laughs) I would describe this movie as off the chain, of course. But yeah, I mean, I can't remember the exact sequence of events, though I watched this yesterday. Um, But when does Jules confront Jackie about, (laughs) which I feel like she goes a little ballsy with this, where she's like, hey, yeah, I went and I went over to Sarah's house and did you kill Jenny? Like, that was right. It was like zero to did you kill Jenny? Mm-hmm. Um, but literally like right after that, you know. Yeah, that's uh, their walk to the cliff. Yeah. That, yeah, like, that's on the walk to the cliff, right? And okay, then, yeah. and then um, Jackie, Megan is like, you don't think that I killed her, did you? And she's like, no, of course. I I don't know, maybe. And uh. then, <laughs> you know she's standing over a cliff mistake number one actually mistake number like 800 at this point going to the woods was mistake number one (laughs) Um, um she's like isn't this beautiful and she turns around and jackie literally is like (laughs) eats her off of the cliff first i thought it was like in revenge for the murder accusation and it's yeah. not fair enough but also I was like well you did accuse her of murder so can you be that mad that she's proving you right 
<laughs> oh my god. It just felt like I leave your team back here. Murder. Look, here's the thing. Um, as the movie just kept going, it's not that I wasn't rooting for Jules because I was, but it it, it felt like okay. There's not a lot of IMDb trivia about this movie, so I tried to do uh, read a lot of interviews to find cool things, and I didn't find much. Um, because most <laughs> of the interviews really were trying not to be spoilery at all, which were, which they all ended up being like, so what's your process? And I was like, that's great, but that's not helpful to me right now. I don't want anyway, to know if their method. <laughs> great for you. I love that. Uh, actually, I don't love that the actress who plays Jules is dating the director because... Um, I, I don't know. I, I wanted her to be a lesbian in real life, I guess, maybe. Um, uh, but I'm happy for them if they're happy. Anyway, a lot of the <laughs> interviews talked about how evenly matched Jackie and Jules are and how that makes it really interesting because it's not just someone fleeing like an a all-powerful killer like it is in a lot of horror movies where it's like there's almost no hope for them. Like very easily things could have changed like like who had the power fluctuated a lot in this movie um and there were a lot of times that i thought like jackie was not not gonna come out on top um and it's not that i was rooting for jules to die because i did like her and i wanted her to survive but i couldn't help having the thought they hate to see a girl boss winning every single time (laughs) they hate to see a girl boss winning I was like, you know, she's really good at this. She's so good. <laughs> like, they hate to see a, a girl woman boss in winning, her Monica. Prime doing yes. her art, you know what I mean? Like she lo- she loves to this sing is her, her little sport. demon song. She loves to sing her little demon song and she loves to absolutely manipulate and gaslight people for years at a time and then take their life and that's wonderful for her. She's really good at it. <laughs> she <laughs> likes a challenge and I just feel like she's put in a lot of work here and we're not going to allow that to narratively pay off. Isn't this it's like unfair. <laughs> gatekeep gaslight girl boss? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is that what oh my she's goodness. everyone and I love that for her. Wow. Look at her go. A true star. Obviously, you know, she's got her craft, Jackie. But I, it was just absolutely so fucked to watch her in the immediate aftermath after just yeeting Jules off the cliff. Because, like, oh, you're yeah. like, wow, it, this is so fucked. And she's just, she's just, like, it's all business immediately. She's like, oh, fuck, Jules ripped my shirt. Well, I got to go back to the house and burn my shirt and change it. And while I'm here, I should probably practice being like, oh my God, my wife, she fell off a cliff. 911. Oh, Jules, are you okay? Like, oh my God, that part was amazing. Acting, 10 out of 10, cr- incredible within the film and outside of the film. Does that make sense? She's a great actress because she's an actress, but inside of the film, Jackie's character is a great actress. Um, and also, the my, probably my favorite part of this entire movie was like once she goes back she okay there is a fatal flaw here though because jackie is a little too sure of herself it seems Mm. she's done this a few too many times and so she thinks she's too much of a girl boss and so she waits too long and that gives jules the time to like (laughs) drag her corpse (laughs) away from the scene of the crime big mistake big mistake totally totally because if she were really prepared, um, she would have had her cell phone on her so that she could go down the cliff, at, like, right afterwards and call 911. Um, I guess, I mean, you could you could say that her strategy was in part if Jules was not already dead on impact to, like, let her bleed out at the bottom mm, of the cliff yeah. or whatever. Like, maybe that was part of it. Um, yeah. But timing-wise, you'd think you would want the 911 call to be pretty right off the bat and you'd think it would be easy to be like she was falling and she grabbed my sleeve and I tried to pull her back up but I couldn't like you'd think it'd be easy to come up with some explanation for the ripped sleeve without having to fully burn the shirt um, yeah or she could have like r- like gotten her arm cut on a rock like climbing down the hill to- down. If she's okay you know there was yeah. better options. She fumbled the ball on that one. Big fumble. <laughs> but one detail that I loved is that she does go all the way back to the cabin to get her phone and she doesn't make the the 9-1 call 
she was going to do. She doesn't make it until she gets back to the cliff and realizes Jules isn't there. Because when she went home and was like practicing in the mirror, I thought she was going to call right away. And I was like, they're going to ping your location and they are going to see that you are not at the cliff, that you went all the way back home. Um, but, th- but they, they didn't do that. And I was like, okay, that is one detail that I did really like about that scene about her plan because it like built into the script that opportunity for Jules to flee yeah and also okay besides Sydney you must have been stoked because there's such good amount of blood in this movie um, oh yeah I always could have been more but there was a nice a really nice amount um, and the gore in this was like so fucked up like the body gore like Jules like the way they did her blood after in the aftermath stunning beautiful incredible um also will have nightmares again tonight about her popping her shoulders back into spot <laughs> into their spot at some as someone with a double jointed shoulders that really upset me uh, <laughs> and the finger too the fucking finger when she, i don't even why did she do that that was unnecessary to put her finger back into place she should have just left that i think um but the moment when Jules is like hiding behind the tree and Jackie's out there stalking her like right, right immediately after the fall. And she's like watching her and Jackie's like, honey, baby, where are you? Are you okay? I can't believe this happened. Blah, blah, blah. And then Jules, like, it looks like she's kind of being swayed, like to be like, oh, I'm going to go to her. And right then Jackie like breaks character and like her face goes completely slack and she looks immediately pissed and she's like fuck and I was just like oh my god insane Mm -hmm. oh yeah iconic and then one second later she picks it right back up too and goes right back to the baby please talk to me I love you so much I'm scared blah 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 she picks it right back up yeah oh my god and then there's like I don't know this is the pacing of this movie like sometimes it gets a little slow but like it in this point in particular when Jules like passes out for a while on the tree and she wakes up and Jackie's like five feet from her in the dark and and she does that whole quote where she's just over it and she's like you must be thinking like my wife has had a psychotic break all of that and she's like well, I know these woods like the back of my hand, so I'll find you or some fucked shit like that. Ah. Okay, but do you know what I loved about that moment? What? what? She had she had both of these moments, both the when she breaks and does the fuck earlier, and then this moment where she fully drops the pretense and goes, I'm done playing around. You must be confused. I loved that both of those happened when Jules was right there to overhear it because I am imagining Jackie going throughout that forest doing that speech a billion different times <laughs> in a couple different iterations being like where What's are you it? call out to me if you can hear me and every few minutes just be like do you know what fuck <laughs> you like every <laughs> loses her patience and is like I will kill you. Um, and Jules just got so lucky as to hear that specific one. But there's like 23 of them that happened. Minimum has to be. Yeah. yeah, there's no way it was so convenient that Jules just happened to be there. I think Jackie is going around there making all kinds of murderous threats to the woods at large. And that's just the one that we caught. I love that for Jackie, though. She really workshopped her speech and like it really paid off. Like, the work that she put into her craft is stunning. Once again. (laughs) She is a true actor. I mean, Oscar for Jackie Megan, honestly. Oscar for Mm -hmm. this movie can be discussed at another time, but Oscar for that character, yes. For sure, 100%. But yeah, they have this whole moment out in the woods where, where Jackie's searching for her, but eventually Jules makes it back to the cabin and then, like, stitches her spleen up or whatever which blah. Oh. um well, but we she's learned, got like yes yeah yeah, we yeah. later like oh you should have gone to med school or like you should have been a doctor why didn't you go to yeah exactly so yeah, maybe like realize. she studied like pre-med and something happened so she dropped out yeah that was an annoying part where at one point someone asks like oh why aren't you a doctor maybe it's jackie 
in like a <laughs> it's a flashback flash kind of thing and she's like i don't want to talk about it and then they never do <laughs> but they gave us that setup at least to be like see there is a reason that she was able to there diagnose her own injuries and be like broken ankle no sprained ankle Girl. bruised spleen bruised no. spleen i think was probably a little uh too far Not for herself sure um but she but tell it wasn't bursting at the seams that's good <laughs> but to be able to be lying there having just been pushed off the cliff by your wife of one full ass year who you presumably dated for a while before that um and to have gone on through that they are herself. lesbians that's true. They could have married immediately. They could have, right? um, they could have just immediately got married. They took the U-Haul to the courthouse. <laughs> I mean, frankly, are we willing to believe that Jackie Megan is above fully love bombing someone? Because that feels perfectly in character with her plan. Oh no, hundred percent. No, I definitely think they've they've definitely been together for like I would say less a year than, and a month. Yeah, like a year and one month. <laughs> you're at Definitely. three days <laughs> yeah exactly like it's something like that where they just like haven't fully gotten to know each other yet yeah I mean, how long can you put the performance on for you know what i mean oscar for jackie megan but but how long can you live a whole ass performance other than i guess society taught us a full 18 years Based on the flashbacks alone, they only knew each other for one night where they were making all those bird sounds at each other. Cool! 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 <laughs> Is the subtext? Okay. Mm -hmm. Some of the imagery gets a little too heavy-handed in this movie, by the by. The by. <laughs> like, bye all the bye. pro stuff that happens later on. Also, like, is the bald eagle a natural predator of a crow? Is that something that I was supposed to glean from that moment where... Jackie's like, well, I'm a bald eagle. And I was like, it's like, I get that bald eagle is a beautiful bird of prey, but also it's like a non-sexy answer, just saying, <laughs> to, to your favorite animal. Um, but that- Adult they, they crows only have few predators, eagles, hawks, owls, and human bald hunters. Bald eagles, so perhaps bald eagles do hunt crows. Wow. A little heavy-handed there, Jackie Megan, but, you know, went right over Jules' head. <laughs> Bald eagles have been known to kill and eat not only younger crows, but also fully developed adults. Oh, wow, no. Jackie ah! really knew her crow facts, and she was <laughs> she was ready to whip them out. Can't she was like, show me them crow facts. Crow. She can't do a crow call, but she knows what eats crows. Ooh, wow. eat crow. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Speaking, anyway, also, anyway. speaking of eating crow, Chelsea still owes us an apology for the boy. <laughs> oh yeah, this is a great opportunity for you to apologize on the pod. <laughs> He's turning purple right now. <laughs> um, I still think that the more interesting movie would be about Brahms himself and not about Greta, but I will say that people were very fond of the boy and the Tumblr girlies really went hard on the boy content that I shared and they are still going hard on the boy content that I shared and created. And so I would, I would like to issue an apology to the tumblr girlies and half of an apology to the two of you um but i but 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 apology aside what i really promised you was a formal i'm wrong proclamation and i will deliver that to you because the public sentiment is not on my side on that one and so if the, <laughs> is, is the boy a good movie or a bad movie um publicly i will say i am wrong the boy <laughs> must be a good movie <laughs> it must you. be based on the it responses that i've received <laughs> based on the empirical scientific data that we have based on our the boy episode <laughs> based on the tumblr notes that i got <laughs> it must be a good movie there so a well I have, you movie. can't beat science okay <laughs> i was wrong i've tried to sneakily escape saying that on the record <laughs> for possibly months now um 
you called me out on on in a moment that I could not. Uh, so kudos to you on that one. Well, you know, I'm taking what I can get, and I do right. that this happens. And yeah, I mean, also, um, further than I thought I would ever go. Right. <laughs> Listen, sometimes you just have to put somebody on the spot to make them do it, and I always say bullying builds character. <laughs> And I always say bullying works. So no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> anyway, keeps you alive. Uh, the 2018 film. <laughs> you know who else is a bully? Jackie Megan in What Keeps You Alive. It's crazy. Um, can oh, I successfully just... transition back to the movie uh-huh. we were supposed to yeah, talking about? It was, it was, yeah, it was really fun. Very but, okay. smooth. I will say I have mad respect for Jules in all of her attempts to keep herself alive um, during this movie. But getting in the boat when you know that Jackie is an incredible shot and has like a rifle that has scope on it. Like the only way you escape a bullet is if you zigzag. I'm like, you don't have the strength to zigzag this boat right now. I thought it was going to be all over right then. I was like, how did she not shoot her? But I guess You're like, this got- is a very short movie. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the only thing that I can think of is she doesn't want to shoot her out in the middle of the lake where Sarah or anyone could possibly see. Yeah, but smart. she does fire the gun. She just somehow misses, which also does not make sense when we saw what an incredible sharpshooter she is. Um, she but probably I guess the missed on purpose. Like, kind of oh, just to scare her by, like, shooting at her. And she does get in her own boat and she rows right after her um, and then nothing. just like has a stern talking to with her. So there's nothing right in front right of like... Daniel. Yeah. Sarah's husband, who's just like drinking the entire movie. He, yeah, is, he is just like, Dylan. we're drinking, just like I'm drunk. And then he's just he like, loves his red wine. They're like screaming at each other on the boat. And he's like, see you at dinner at eight tonight, guys. <laughs> He's like, hey, ladies, like, <laughs> how you doing Are over you there? Guys all right. Lovers quarrel. Like, OK, but I have to say that I just want to put shine on the fact that there is a rowboat chase scene in this movie. And I've never mm-hmm. seen that before. And that's yeah, really also, cool. <laughs> their upper body strength, because oh. that's the second time she has faced, like technically the third. She had to row back. Yeah, like, I would just be like. No, I have the upper body strength of a newborn baby. I would not make it. Can't relate, I, but good for and, them. <laughs> when Jules pulled out the, or when Jackie pulled out the gun, I fully thought Jules was just going to like lie down in the rowboat and like tuck herself under the top. And I didn't know if that rowboat would stop a bullet, but I was like, that would be the only strategy. I would just simply float in the lake and hope for the best. <laughs> to be <laughs> lay down to die. <laughs> I but will yeah. just simply lie down. Also, like, just absolutely ridiculous that she would be able to row that fast, Jules, I mean, when she's just popped both of her shoulders back into place after them being dislocated, like, from falling. So that's, I- no. <laughs> I will say, though, we saw that the second that Jackie got in her own boat, she could row approximately three times as fast. Yes. So she she got up to her pretty immediately. Um, eventually, she managed to, like, drag her back to shore, essentially. Um, and then we got this whole, like, fucked up scene where Jackie has Jules in the bathtub and Jackie is, like, tending to her wounds, but is also being like, don't forget you're at my mercy. Don't forget I could kill you any second that I wanted to. And also, I will kill everybody else if you don't behave at this dinner that we now have to have with Sarah and Daniel. <laughs> Yeah, like, I get why Jules, like, did that. It was, like, her, like, last hurrah. But I feel like there could, there must have been some way she could have been, like, help me right then and there. Instead of luring Sarah and Daniel to their Back death to the house. as well. Like, she should have just yelled out, like, right then, like, she's trying to, to kill me or something no i mean like daniel can i use your bathroom you know and then it would be really weird if jackie was like no you can't use daniel's bathroom you know that would have also worked babe just come back and shit in our cabin what do you mean 
deep. There's an like, entire you can, forest you can <laughs> shit in. <laughs> just jump Wait, off the side of the Daniel. and do it. <laughs> yeah, like there were That's a good point, though. Yeah, there are other things she could have said instead of it being like, please come to our secluded cabin with a murderer there. <laughs> right. Even if she did, though, I mean, the, the whole reason she didn't say anything more specific than that, I guess, is because Jackie had a knife and was like, if you say anything, I'll kill you right now, essentially. But also, if you feel like you're going to... I mean, her strategy, I guess, in inviting Sarah to Daniel and Daniel to dinner was like, I will buy myself some time, at least until after this dinner, and potentially I'll come up with an escape plan or something will happen. Um, but if she had said something right then, even if she believed that Jackie would gut her and then get out to go get Sarah and Daniel, wouldn't she think like Sarah and Daniel would it'd be hard to get right out of the boat onto the dock and running after them. You know what I mean? They would they would have a moment there. She might not make it, but um, as it turns out, you know, perhaps that would have been in the best interest of the majority of people involved. Yeah. Because her plan didn't work out so well. No, it really no, didn't. No, her plan got Sarah and Daniel both got. Got, got too. Like, that was, a, those were some fun kills. But I just love. I did have a good time with those. Yeah, the whole dinner party scene was fucking one so uncomfortable just like the idea of it in general is a horror show to me without the murder aspect at all like having to have a double date dinner with like your estranged childhood best best friend who you fucking can't stand like that and like that is the nightmare you're a psychopath Yes, like, you know, I'm friend. not talking from Jackie's perspective I'm talking from Sarah's perspective <laughs> yes I, I don't know nightmare. why she would go in the first place. Like, why would she want to? Fuck why social she... niceties, Sarah. Save your own life. Trust your gut. Right? Like, she was a psycho from the get-go. It feels wrong. Don't do it. And also Seriously. Daniel to be out on the porch with Jackie alone and be like, haha, my wife thinks you're a psychopath. Like, he didn't even say it, though. That was such a good part, too. My wife kind of thinks you're, uh, and Jackie's like, a psychopath. And he's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> gotcha. Um, <laughs> but also, like, I feel like Jules could have waited to, for a different moment to tell Sarah. Like, there, well, there was not a lot of good planning with that either. There was one the time. not on point. There was one time that I, I like wrote in my notes like right when they get there, um, Daniel goes with Jackie into the kitchen and Sarah like goes to hug Jules and I would have been like this would be the right time to whisper be like help me she's trying to kill me you know what I mean like so that way like Sarah can at least be like more prepared and like figure out like okay what do we have to do but like. Girl, why are you whispering it right in front of a glass wall? Who thought that was a good idea? Seriously. Oh, my God. And then that look of realization on Sarah's face was so good where she's like, yes, I knew this bitch was a psychopath. But then there's no time to be like, I told you so, because she's already whipped Murdered out the hunting husband. knife and sliced his throat. Oh, just beautiful. Just beautiful gore. Just stunning stuff. Um, and then, of course, Sarah makes the telltale classic horror movie mistake where she goes upstairs, which is, I was just like, honey, honey, it's over. <laughs> There's Never just go nothing. upstairs. Uh, but yeah, when she's, and also when Jackie's like about to stab Sarah in the sternum, just as she said she would do, and she goes, Jenny put up more of a fight. Oh, oh God. God. Which is so fucked because we learned what happened to Jenny earlier, which is that uh, she drowned in the lake. And then we hear Jackie's original version of what happened to Jenny, which is that they were doing a swimming competition and Jenny must have cramped up and drowned. And, and so you can imagine what you think happened between them. But to see this like full blown battle between Jackie, Megan and Sarah and then have her say, Jenny put up more of a fight implies it was so much more than just a simple drowning in the water. Oh, yeah. Oh. 
super tall. This is why I don't hang out with old friends. <laughs> you literally are talking to one right now. Okay, um, well, like we stayed friends the whole time, so it's fine. So there was there was no room for things to go truly off the rails in the meantime. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I was yeah, I was looped in with you long, like tangentially enough even when you were in college and I was in college where I was like she's not killing people for sport she doesn't have four <laughs> wives that have all mysteriously died um, I mean people have secrets Monica you can never truly be inside of someone's head as we learned from this movie I'm so um, glad we're recording remotely <laughs> <laughs> I I did promise in the beginning to murder you in the woods I mean you know mm. what what are you gonna do? Yeah, you kind of um, set this up for me. So this is why no, I will not go to the woods. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there is this other moment. Um, because when you you hear that Jenny put up more of a fight, you start to be like, how many times has she done this? And at least one other time, if not several other times. Um, because you get this moment between Jackie and Jules where they're like sitting by the fireplace. I think this is after Sarah and Daniel, or maybe it was um before the dinner scene, but I regardless. Think it was before um, the dinner scene, but yeah. Okay. Possibly before the dinner scene, after the bath scene. That's all I know. Because like I said, I don't have a lot of notes to help me like organize the chronology of this movie, but I wrote down this dialogue because I loved it so much. Um, but Jules says your story, what your dad said, to only kill what keeps you alive. This isn't what he meant. You're sick, Jackie, but I can get you help. It's okay. It's not easy to admit. I understand, but I'll stay by your side. I will. Blah, blah, blah. She keeps going. And then Jules just, or Jackie just looks her in the face and goes, I never told you about my first wife, did I? And I was like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. That's the moment where you're you're like she is not just this is not her first rodeo. It's oh, not no, she's just a straight she did up something yeah serial killer. This is not something she did once as a kid and has been chasing that high sense. She has become an adult with practice in this field. She is a professional. Um presumably this is the only way she's getting any livelihood. Um it's just it's the yeah, thrill she, of the hunt. She tells a whole story about Erica. Um, and this is actually a really great quote, too, where she says, um, we were on vacation. She went swimming after having a few too many. I mourned her, prayed with her parents, read at her funeral. I'll do the same at yours. Which is like, woo, woo, woo. Is that why you we think she's changing names? So, like, what Possibly. was her name when she was oh, yeah. married to Erica? So that way, like, they're oh, not yeah. catching up. Like, she has, like, you know, two dead wives and a dead friend. Maybe Jackie is her previous wife. Oh. Yeah. Mm. She was Erica for a time. Wonder if she ever went by Jenny. <laughs> Ooh. Um, one of my favorite, favorite, absolute favorite scenes is after... Um, she's murdered Sarah and Daniel. We see um, her laying uh, plastic down and then she starts chopping up <gasps> their bodies and being like, I know exactly how deep this lake is, like blah, 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 blah. Like, oh my God, it's so good. And, and I learned that if you have to clean up blood, not oh, important blot. information uh, you have to blot and not scrub because forensics will immediately see a scrub job if you scrub it'll embed the stain yeah, yeah. come on obviously this is jules's first murder um and it She's shows not ready. frankly embarrassing <laughs> 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 but yeah there's also this other moment that reveals like just how far along Jackie is in this um but that doesn't totally make sense it's like a great uh symbolic moment to show you the deal but like in terms of getting away with crimes I feel it, it is a, a bit of a fatal flaw um but they're in the living room in front of the fireplace again and Jules sees something by this 
stuffed bear head, this taxidermy bear head they have on the walls right next to a deer, by the way, very clearly a one person is prey, one person is predator symbolism right off the beginning. Mm -hmm. Um, But she sees this box and she pulls it down and it reminded me of another famous scene from another famous horror movie that I won't uh, reference to specifically because it's such a good shock that I would hate to spoiler it for spoil it for anyone. Um, but she pulls down this box and and Jules opens it and she finds that there are like ten lockets inside, just like the one that Jackie gave her earlier in the film, implying like she is ready or she has done this before. We don't know if they were past lockets. We don't know if they are future lockets, like to be prepped for future wives. But the implication that like she's locked and loaded, ready to go, incredible. Oh, and like so chilling. So fucking chilling. (laughs) I definitely thought that it meant that she had killed like six people. That's what I was thinking too. I was like, oh, these are her trophies. Yeah. I thought it was a trophy box because it it makes sense that it's trophies because it's literally with her first kill, which is the bear, you know? Ooh. Yeah. There you go. And serial All killers the trophies love trophies. I exactly. learned exactly five billion different TV shows. And if it's on I've TV, I've seen then, every episode true. of Criminal Minds. Uh, we know about mm-hmm. serial killers' trophies. <laughs> we know about serial killers' trophies. <laughs> Um, but this leads us into one of the, the, I would say the segment of the film, which is like this part until the end where things get way more artistic, like with the cinematography and everything and the symbolism. And sometimes it's a little heavy handed and this <laughs> scene was really long, but I really loved the black light scene with like the was so music, good. her playing the piano with the blood on her face. Like, oh God. Stunning, stunningly done. Great job, Colin Minihan. And then and the way it ends. What is it? It's Minihan. It's not Han Mini. <laughs> <laughs> but the way that scene ends when she's playing the song and then she just plays like one wrong note at the end, I thought was really great and was oh, like yeah. the the discordant moment in that, like the the tonal shift of of that was oh, I yeah. thought really fun. <laughs> Oh, I literally can't get over how hot she looks in the black light blood. Oh my god, she's so hot. Like it just has to be said that Jackie's so hot. <laughs> Her hot to crazy ratio, perfect balance. <laughs> just kiss. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But so after the blood scene, it is time for uh Jackie to take Jules back out to pasture you know and (laughs) she's driving (laughs) she's like we gotta do round two with this I'm gonna get it right and she's really committed to her cliff plan (laughs) yeah Yeah, but also the the lead up to them getting in the jeep to go to this to her death to Jules's death is also so fucked up she's like you gotta eat breakfast there if they do an (laughs) autopsy there needs to be food in your stomach and then she's Jules was like, why do you have pliers here? And she's like, well, it wouldn't make sense for you to have stitches in your stomach, would it? And so they like rip out all of her spleen stitches before they take her out to throw her off the cliff oh again. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Fucked shit. <laughs> oh, God. But so then they are driving back to the cliff, you know, in the car. And... <laughs> Jules takes out a fucking drank dart and just goes, Wah! which <laughs> did we have the setup for why they have drank darts? Did we see any drank darts before that moment? Or <laughs> I've seen it earlier at some point because I remember being like, oh, yeah, a dart. But what no one <laughs> says they're drank darts. And I don't think that Jules necessarily knows that they're drank darts either. Because I don't know like- if you just like common sense the darts with like that poofy tail at the end and a hunting family is typically a tranquilizer dart always oh yes of course i forgot about how i've seen wily coyote (laughs) i was gonna be like have you never watched a tv show 
I have, but I have not paid attention to those types of details. <laughs> Again, I'm very detail oriented, Monica. I know these things. I know. I appreciate it. It really brings a lot to the to the pod and to my understanding of the film. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she whips out this tranquilizer dart in the car and just like stabs Jackie. <laughs> and at first you think it's just like bought her a moment to escape, which unfortunately, stupidly, she runs right to the cliff <laughs> edge and then stands on it like, uh-oh, now what? Which is a little bit like, Jules, I know you, you did this. this through. I know you really couldn't plan in advance, but there has to be a better improv option than this. Like, Oopsies. there's no way you were like, oh, I'll just go right to the cliff where I'll be safe. Because historically speaking, I have always been safe standing on the edge of this cliff. Yeah. Babe. Learn from Babe. your mistakes. <laughs> It does work out for her, though, because the Trank Dart kicks in right in time, um, approximately five seconds before Jackie Megan would have reached her and shoved her over. Um, so, you know, that that goes her way. And Jules hops in the car to drive off. And then she's like, do you know what? I'm a crow. And crows are the smartest birds in the forest, even if bald eagles eat the young ones and the fully developed adult ones or whatever Google said earlier. <laughs> um, so she returns, I guess, presumably just to be like, I'm finishing this. Even if I escape, I don't want you to be able to do this to anybody else. Like, this is for me. This is, she doesn't say this. This is just the subtext. This is, yeah. um, this is for Jenny. This is for Erica and all future potential Jennies and Ericas. Um, so she goes back to get Jackie and gets shoved right over the fucking cliff again. <laughs> I would like, I kind of thought, I was like, well, maybe she's going back. Um, you guys skipped a huge part. <laughs> yeah, she she's in the house for like a while first. Oh, oh yeah, no, she goes back uh -huh. and she sees right. the same thing that happened with Jack for when Jackie came back to find Jules after the original cliff push um at the beginning of the movie um and she's like fuck she's not there so jackie megan was no longer there the trank dart trank dart wore off apparently and so honestly was, a uh, weak trank dart i know she did pull it out really fast so like maybe that's part of it but like mm. i don't fucking know i didn't even know it was a trank dart <laughs> most animals don't have thumbs i guess so maybe it is like that's a fair. slow that's releasing fair. serum yeah, and so at that point for me, if I, well, one, I never would have gone back. I wouldn't have, when I saw, while driving, if I saw a crow, I wouldn't have been like, I'm a crow, too, and look at that crow. Wow, I'm going to fly back and save the day. I like th that part, like, made me roll my eyes so fucking hard. But, like, good for her. It's great to be inspired, and I love birds as well, so, like, I can't be too mad. I kind of thought she was going back because I like in my head I was like you know the trank dart will wear off she's just gonna destroy a bunch of evidence and you know what I mean like that's and like maybe she'll blame me for the murders of these two people and so it would have been I like a weird that like too. that was like what was going through my head that she was like I've got to go back and finish all of this or like get evidence and blah 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 I would have just fucking called the cops immediately. Sorry, that's the only option in this place. And be like, let me get my story on the record now before this psycho bitch comes and tells right? me the opposite, you know? But she can't find... Oh, but that's earlier that she can't find a phone. Although presumably yeah. they're still smashed or hidden or, or wherever they were. She's in a were. car, though. Drive your car to a, any place. <laughs> Sarah um, in Daniel's house probably has phones. Yeah. Right. They live there all the time. Maybe they have a landline. But she only knows how to get there via rowboat. She doesn't know oh the, how to get there by Excellent land. Excellent point. Excellent point. By land, by land. To it by sea. Oh. <laughs> so but applicable yeah. here. So when she goes back and Megan is is gone, Megan Jackie is gone. Like I then I would be like, all right, well, I did my darndest to try to avenge Erica and Jenny, and now I'm for sure, for sure going to the fucking cops. And so she just goes back to the house. And when she goes back to the house, I'm like, okay, like, 
I know that you were saying earlier, Chelsea, that like they're evenly matched. And so like it was fun that they're evenly matched. I was like, they're not evenly matched. Jules is going <laughs> to fucking die. <laughs> like, she is just asking to die right now. Like she is throwing herself on the sword. And I was like, that's really sweet of you, but also couldn't be me. <laughs> I did like though because there was a moment of that where she was like I'm the hunter now bitch where she like blasts her metal song from earlier (laughs) that Jackie hated right off the bat where Jules was like this is our song that was like one of the few quotes I wrote down in the beginning I have like 10 notes and one of them in the beginning was when when Jackie said I knew you were a fixer upper Jules but this is worse than I could have ever imagined about her music taste first of all now in hindsight Uh she calls her a fixer upper what a cunt um bitch. Oh, what a bitch but um yeah that she blasts that song into the forest and is like come get me i thought it was kind of a badass moment i thought that it was is... is it wise i don't know it almost worked out for her she just was not quite sure enough in herself um because she does get jackie at gunpoint she does have jackie like kneeling on the ground with her hands in the air and the rifle pressed to her skull but then jackie who is a thinker and a planner and good on her feet is just like you're gonna hurt yourself with that gun because it's an antique and it's gonna blow back in your face not through my head and jules hesitates for long enough that jackie's able to get the upper hand yeah keep gaslight girl boss, girl boss. <laughs> Never hesitate. See a girl boss winning. Seriously, it's really winning. Because <laughs> okay, at that point though, Jackie had done so much. She had an elaborate plan. She improvised when the plan didn't go as well as she wanted it to. You know what I mean? She really, at every point, even kneeling on the ground, hands in the air, gun to her head, she managed to switch things up. I just feel like. Jackie was really putting in the work and and it wasn't rewarded. It wasn't rewarded. No. No. I mean, she this is her first time trying to kill and Jackie's done it like eight times. And so mm-hmm. she just uh, didn't have the experience, unfortunately. It's just too bad. But okay, so how then remind me, does Jackie incapacitate Jules cuz she like gets her unconscious? They're she... fighting in the attic, remember? So we don't like fully see. Oh, we don't what even see. Oh, that's oh, a wait, great actually... scene. Yes, that's a really interesting shot scene. Yeah, that was really well done. Like there are a lot of like fun cinematic things that they did with the cinematography, and I was just like, "All right, yes. this guy's got an exciting eye. Good for him. <laughs> good, good for you, Colin." <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's just sad to see because then Jules is like unconscious for like the final moments of her, her life. Pretty much. She just gets carted off in the Jeep to the same cliff as before. Um, and We've now visited this cliff approximately 1200 times, right? Like, <laughs> very this popular. Cliff cliff. Deserves a supporting actor nomination for the Oscars. Seriously. There it's were very five beautiful. actors in this movie and one of them is the cliff. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> um, but yeah, that final moment of Jules' life, maybe, um, is when uh, Jackie is about to yeet her off the cliff and she wakes up in the last second and is like, please, no. And then she just is immediately shoved off. Great. Beautifully done. <laughs> um, but I have to say that the award for most fucked up kill does in the end go to Jules herself because <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> like I knew that the fact that Jackie's diabetic was gonna be a huge part of it because yes. like they made right when you first got there yeah. and she's like hey babe have you seen my insulin you're like gotta make a mental note about that one that yeah. was before I even knew their names and I wrote in my notes um okay long hair is diabetic will that be relevant of course of course we don't just give people real life traits without them coming back to be their downfall apparently they can't just like have a just casually have a diabetic character just like we can't casually have a gay wife couple they have to kill each other (laughs) (laughs) nothing is casual in a movie nothing is casual um but yeah i mean 
beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing for for Jackie Megan to think she's got it in the bag. And except for the fact that she didn't take her insulin on that day, which like, honey, you got to keep that shit with you. Um, and she f- doesn't pay attention, shoots, shoots it into her tum tum. Um, and then she notices that the laptop is askew and there is a final message from Jules, which is so like the performance in that in and of itself. Very nice. Great job, Jules, being a fucking psycho bitch. Cause like, what a way to go when you like, it's like almost more horrifying than many any of the other deaths that we know about because like she had already injected herself with the hydrogen peroxide and she knows that some shit can happen and there's literally nothing that she can do and she feels fine now but there's nothing that she can do because that blood clot is headed for her head and there's nothing she can fucking do oh god I want to record a video that just starts off with like if you're seeing this then I'm already dead I don't know what I'll say, but I want to record one of those kind of videos. It's an iconic trope. It is. Oh, it's a great, great trope. Yeah, but okay. I love this movie. I had a really good time. But the last little scene is so fucking heavy handed artistry that I was just like, oh my God. Yeah. She's running through the forest. She looks like shit, love her, but she's dying. So it's not her fault. Um, and then the bear is there and I was like is the bear actually there and she's gonna get mauled to death by a bear (laughs) as like the bear's revenge (laughs) that's what I really thought was gonna happen and I was like that's kind of stupid but it was just a flashback (laughs) there's like a surprisingly large amount of flashbacks in this movie I know, and which is interesting so I couldn't because, tell it was a flashback yeah and half of them are to the same one scene yeah multiple times where we yeah. get that crow bald eagle dialogue fully twice just <laughs> to really remind you it's not like you see part of it earlier and then the second time it it's extended and you get the I'm a bald eagle for the first time being like oh she's always been the predator like no 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 the only reveal is like how the bird conversation was set up and I honestly don't even remember it at this point I just was like how many times can I hear these women make bird sounds like (laughs) at at least three I guess (laughs) and I I really love the choice that they made to show her in the raptures of her stroke the whole time every second of it for like a whole minute that was I also Something liked to behold that will how we stay see... with me for a while. <laughs> well, I like that we also, you know, see, so we saw the bear, but we also see baby teenage Jules shoot the bear. And so it looks like she shot she herself. Megan. Yeah. Yes. And the bear, the shot hits the bear. The, sh- the stroke hits Jackie Megan. She hits the ground. Oh my God. The, the, it's steeped in something what's the word i'm trying to say meaning symbolism metaphor metaphor, (laughs) all of those things all of the above (laughs) i thought it was totally heavy-handed but also i did really like it yeah Um, but it's not even the last scene we get like one more moment um and i watched it with subtitles did any of you not watch it with subtitles no i watched it with subtitles i watched it with subtitles okay i would love to talk to somebody who watched that last scene without subtitles because watching it with subtitles it cuts back to um the bottom of the cliff where Jules's presumably dead body has been thrust for the second time um and it's like from her perspective so you're not looking at her but you hear like a gasp or like a breath and mm-hmm. on the subtitles it says Jules breathes or something like that. <laughs> Yeah, and I was like, well, in case there was anything I didn't get about what was happening, yeah. thank you. <laughs> but I, if there wasn't the subtitles, I wonder if it would be like that inception moment where it's like, did she breathe? Did she not breathe? Was that the wind? Like, would people be debating it if the subtitles didn't clearly confirm what happened? I'll go back and I'll watch it without the subtitles and see if it sounds like a breath. Okay, but I'll I want to know. know. How does this bitch survive being yeeted off a cliff twice? Twice. 
and okay, like she well, already not has that injuries tall of... from the first, but she already has like a you know like a sprained ankle, like her spleen stitches are ripped out, so like those are probably fucked again. Like, and we don't know that she survives, survives because she very much could true. bleed to death <laughs> the second time around. Um, her legs could be yeah actually broken this time. My legs. <laughs> <laughs> the gag that just came out of me <laughs> oh man i love a spongebob reference um always timely always appropriate um, i love to think that she lives for sure but also i was like she's dead but she took out jackie megan and so she did the world a service but also a disservice yeah. because she was so hot braver than the, the only the only thing i could think the first time around when she survived was she must have really benefited from the fact that it happened so fast and was such a shock because I feel like if she was falling, she would have like braced her body for impact. And instead it happened so fast that she probably was like fully limp essentially, which, which helps you when you have an injury like that, because if you're bracing for impact, your body doesn't like absorb the shock as well. Mm. Um, whereas if you're limp, your body is like, kind of kind of just goes with it um and it's less harmful to you um you know a lot about this thank you so much i have gone rock climbing um <laughs> i don't know if that's relevant maybe that's not where i learned it i but... have too but i didn't learn that fuck <laughs> good to know <laughs> <laughs> what i this is innocent information um <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the second time, I guess she was very recently unconscious. So maybe she was not awake enough, conscious enough, aware enough. And, and she went limp again a second time. I mean, I don't know. You're right. It is like, how, how did she survive this twice? Twice being shoved off a cliff. But I am willing to give cliff. it to her. I'm willing to give it to her. Especially, I mean, you could argue that Cliff has, yeah, you could argue this Cliff has been demonstrated to not be tall enough to be fatal once already. So maybe she could be shoved off a third time and they would be like, we we keep telling you she's not going to die from this Cliff. Learn from your mistakes. Jackie Googled how tall or how big, deep, what are words for lakes? How big and deep. (laughs) Jackie Googled how deep the lake was, but she did not do enough Googling clearly about um, heights you need to fall from for it to be fatal. Right, she should have found a higher cliff. Or one with more jagged rocks. Yeah, she was on kill like nine and she got cocky. And that's the moral of the story is don't get cocky, you know? Wow, fair. Fair. (laughs) So we will remember that. How could this movie be gayer? <laughs> um, well, we talked last week about how we wanted a film um, with a lesbian couple actually getting to be a lesbian couple. And I would argue that was minimal that. in this movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so it could be gayer in that we get a gay couple who actually loves each other. Um, yeah that would have been really cool to see like gay joy like but (laughs) you don't even see gay joy in gay films where it's not a horror film so I don't know what I was expecting or why I was expecting that that was never gonna happen (laughs) we just want nice things okay I I think that's fair love each other I will say I was very, very afraid once they revealed that Jackie Megan was a psychopath, that it was also going to be revealed that she's not even gay, but she just likes killing women. Um, I think she is at least confirmed gay. I think, I think she's for sure gay. So that is gay. That's really all I can say for this movie. (laughs) It could be a lot gayer still. I wish we did not get interrupted in our sex scene by Sarah yeah like that if they would have just dope. given us that and then be like uh, all we got is a dry hump right <laughs> but I was like look how hot these women are together like they're in love it's passionate and then all of it know what I mean like I wanted to see that and then I think oh, I yeah. felt more of a betrayal 
and it got hot and heavy like so fast also like jackie was sitting there playing her demon bloodletting song jules picked the guitar out of her hands and was like so hot they started making out a second later heavy heavy breathing like they were going for it i was ready to see coitus I, i i said at the end of last episode that that's what i wanted from this movie and i still didn't get it Still I don't waiting. think any of the rest of the movies we have planned for this month are going to give it to me either, and so I'm pissed off. <laughs> it's okay, Monica. We'll, we'll just find, like, a nice gay softcore porn and watch that. Okay, yeah. Blood Spotted <laughs> Bride was kind of there, but it didn't go all the way. And so... We'll find a real one. Don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Google's horror-themed softcore porn. <laughs> <laughs> gay horror <laughs> Are you Googling right now? Yeah, yes. she's Googling it right now. <laughs> Anything good? The Ooh, Lemon Stealing know. Whore. Is that one of the ones that comes up? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot. I'll send you things. Don't worry. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Anyway, so where would Le- Matthew Lillard fit into this movie? Hmm, of the um, one male role in this film. Yeah. So he would have to be Daniel. <laughs> Like we said during, uh, I think it's the Blood Spattered Bride earlier movie when we covered that one. I don't think we should restrict Matthew Willard just to male roles. I mean, you know, he can play whoever he wants. Oh, Matthew would be a great Jackie Megan. Mm-hmm. We he? gender bend the entire cast, so it's still gay, but it's dudes. Matthew Willard actually could play either. He yes. would be a great Jules. I would be really interested in seeing his him taking on Jules because we've seen Stu in Scream, you know what I mean? And even then he didn't have like that Billy turn, which is really more of what the Jackie deal is. Um, he just from the beginning was like, you could gut somebody, gut them like a, you know what I mean? Like from the beginning, mm-hmm. he's like, hi, I'm Stu and I'm not well. Um, whereas hi, I'm Stu and I'm a freaky fuck. <laughs> yeah, Jackie at least has to fly under the radar here. Um, I would like to see Matthew Willard playing that like desperate for survival, but angry, but ready for revenge moment that Jewel has here. Good fuck with that. But he would also be great as Daniel. He'd be really fun as Daniel. He would be really yes. fun as Daniel. If we're gender bending this, the whole thing though, um, who would be the Jackie to my Matthew Lillard's jewels? Like who would we dream? Cast? I think we revived the Billy Stew of it all. Okay, thank God. Okay, good. Yeah, we wow. would have to. So are you writing this fan fiction, Chelsea? Have you already written it? <laughs> how many chapters in <laughs> uh, what if i was like i have 75 microsoft word pages right now <laughs> chelsea the people need you, it the people need it now i will i chelsea will deliver some movie. sort of tumblr graphic or something for you some sort I would of really AU like to graphic here like chelsea watched this movie for the first time this morning and she already has 75 <laughs> pages of a <laughs> of AU fan fiction <laughs> But actually, the Billy and Stu of it all would be so perfect for a gender bend. Seriously. It would be so good. That would, wow. I'd watch the fuck out of that. Let's do a fan cast. Somebody show. make it happen. Uh, Matthew Lillard, hello? What if that was the one phone call he answered from us? I think it would be worth it. I think this is right. Matthew Lillard. If ever you are to listen to pitch. Spooky Tuesday and, and get on board with one of our casting choices, this is the one. Mm-hmm. This is it. This is it. This is it. Um, I'm excited for his reaction. It'll be positive. There's no way it won't. <laughs> There's no way he'll ignore this. Not, not in a single way. It's no, too no, good. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> um, okay, so this is actually going to be a hard question, but who is the dumb bitch? Ugh. It's hard. I'd like to make a nomination, um, and I would like to nominate Sarah who I think, you know, is kind of in a tricky position potentially. But if you think that someone from your past is a psychopath who murdered your friend, um, I would not electively get dinner with them. I just don't think that I would go out of my way 
to get dinner with them. Like, sure, go check on their cabin, make sure it's not being broken in. But Megan did not invite her to dinner. Jules is the one that came over and invited her to dinner. And I think um, if you feel too awkward to say no to those plans on the spot, you just cancel later. You know what I mean? Right. You don't have to go to the dinner. You don't have to go. Mm-hmm. You don't have People, to. You can do whatever you want. That's a time honored tradition of running into somebody from your past and being like, "We should catch up," and then never catching up. Yeah. Right. And she it's also, once she gets to the dinner party that she shouldn't have gone to, runs upstairs. Okay, I I see all the points that you're making, but I <laughs> also would like to take your Sarah and raise you a Daniel because Daniel's supposed to be her loving and supporting hubby and he doesn't take her real serious fear that Megan is a psychopath seriously he's joking about it to Megan Jack slash Jackie which is a that just shows that he doesn't care this is it goes back to all the things that we've said we've said in all these different movies where like if I say that there's a ghost my partner better fucking believe that there's a motherfucking ghost it's the same thing. If I say my childhood best friend killed our other best friend and she's a psychopath, you need to believe me. <laughs> like, and, fucking believe me. Yes. And when I show trepidation about the dinner party, you better believe me. Also, we are the canceling. Fact that, yeah. No, we're canceling. We're canceling. And also the fact that he saw them like having a very serious murder yell a thon in a boat and he was like, hey girls, trouble in paradise. <laughs> yeah, the fuck? Jules um, had blood it. all down the side of her face and they kind of established that it was too far to see someone's face clearly, but I feel like the blood it stood like, out against her oh, very pale coloring. Yeah, agreed. Dumb bitch. Going- like, I know she's not the overall dumb bitch, but, like, Jules did have some dumb bitch moments. Just, like, a couple. Know what I mean? Like She also had did. a few really smart bitch moments. That's and I don't know like, how she's much not they offset be each the over, other. But she, I know she's not going to no. win the overall award, but, like, she went back kind of brings her after neutral. escaping. She then, ru- like, she, ru- she gets her in the trank dart and then runs to the cliff. She tries to outrun a girl with great shot in a rowboat after dislocating both of her shoulders. Like, girl. She does initiate a rowboat chase. <laughs> like, yeah. Agreed. She, goes, a lot of she new- agrees to go to a cabin in the woods. Dumb, dumb bitch. bitch move number right one. There. Like, that she earns the nomination. Bitch. Yeah, she gets a nomination. She gets a nom, but not the award. And even Jackie has her moments too, where she gets too big for her britches. She thinks I've got this murder in the bag, this insurance life insurance policy. It's going down. But then she underestimates young Jules. And there you go. That's a dumb bitch behavior as well. But she's also really good at what she does and looks really good as she does it. And so she's not gonna win the dumb bitch award. That's for sure. No, she wins the hot bitch award. Yeah. Good for her. Good for her. Good for us as well. <laughs> um, I really think that it's Daniel, but I also will accept Sarah if I am outnumbered. I feel like you you fully swayed me on Daniel. Oh, thank you. I swing both ways, so I'm good with either <laughs> I or. Both ways. Literally, <laughs> both we are ways. different after covering Dead First Body. <laughs> <laughs> Just like I tweeted today, like this movie changed me at a molecular level. Like, imagine if I had seen it when it came out. Oh, God. Anyway. If you had seen it in uh, the 11th grade, you would not be recognizable as the person you are today, I think. No, I'd be it way would have, The changes set in last summer, I think we're still seeing it manifest. Mm-hmm. But fully, you're, you would have formed a different personality, I think, if you had seen it at such a formative age. Yeah. Monica, you could have been just like me. <laughs> Well, then, thank God. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Don't <laughs> me. <laughs> Sorry, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I love you. <laughs> it was a joke. <laughs> oh, okay, sure. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's do our knives out of fives. Uh, who wants to go first? <laughs> um, go. Set the scene. Oh, yes. Set the scene. 
Um, this movie got a 5.7 out of 10 on IMDb. And what is really, really interesting to me is on Rotten Tomatoes, it got 83% fresh from critics and 43% rotten from audiences, which oh is like a God. huge, huge disparity. Yeah. Um, and we went over on the Blood Spattered Bride episode how Rotten Tomatoes works. So that doesn't mean that like, critics rated it an 83% and audiences rated it at 43%. It could be that 83% of critics rated it like just barely fresh and 43% of audiences rated it just barely rotten, but it is still an enormous difference. And so I, it seems like opinions really kind of run the gamut here. I feel like it kind of makes sense though, because like some critics would just eat up all the fucking like thematic beautiful cinematography, cinematography yeah. stuff you know and like you know if you're going into this movie for a horror movie you know you might not appreciate the literal four minute long black light scene like it was long <laughs> <laughs> i love it beethoven oh, yeah it was, long. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was a long scene <laughs> and like the bear part the bear part was confusing i thought the bear was there in real life because they skipped the black and white motif for showing things in the past and I was like, well, now I'm lost. You got to stick with the motif. I'm absolutely lost. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay. I This movie, this is the first time any of us have seen it, right? I, I yeah. watched this at 7 a.m. on a Sunday morning, but it was gloomy that morning. And so oh. good vibes for it. Um, great way, <laughs> fucked up way to start your day, but a great one. Um, but yeah, I really liked this movie. I wasn't sure... There are parts in the middle where I felt like it lost me a little bit just because it got a little slow and there was a period of time where I was like, it must be over. And then I looked and there were 40 minutes left. And so <laughs> I was like, oh God. Um, but then the last 40 minutes were really, really good. So it redeemed itself. Um, but yeah, I mean, for a modern horror movie with like a fun take, like I haven't seen something like with this exact same type of vibe. Um, I think it was really I think it was really well done and I, I'm excited to see what this guy does in the future with his with, with the rest of his movies because I'm like he's setting the groundwork for having some exciting ideas in the future but for this movie it's hard I think it's actually like really good so I'll give it a, a 4.0789 that's it. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I can't do a 4.1. I did that for the last episode. <laughs> I'm going to give this a 3.5. I'm never going to watch this movie ever again. Um, I didn't yeah. hate it, but it wasn't like, it wasn't scary. There was no scares in it. I was just like, eh, like, I think there was ways that it could have been scarier. The music, even though the music was like very intense, I was like, this isn't necessary right now. She's just rowing a boat. Like, so I was just like, mm, 3.5. Fair enough. Fair, very fair. Um, for me, I think... You're right that a lot of it was really heavy handed. Um, you're right that the, the, the director was clearly showing his hand a lot of the time mm -hmm. making the movie. It was a little, um, I don't know that I would say self-congratulatory because yeah. I don't, don't feel quite like that was the vibe, but he was, he was clearly into and excited by his ability to experiment with like, the different styles of filming, the different styles of shooting, like working in different things. Um, and I feel like there could have been a little more work on, in some moments with the script. Like the, there was that moment we talked about earlier where Jules jumps immediately to, did you kill Jenny? That like felt like a total reach for all of us. Yeah. Um, none of us thought that that was what Sarah was implying. Um, but for the most part, I think 
when I made a joke about there being five actors and one of them is a cliff, that is only slightly an exaggeration because the fifth actress is actually young Megan. But other than that, there are truly five people in this film. And it's like the same three locations. Like they clearly did a lot with very few resources. Like it's a very contained movie. And so I think with what they were working with, what they pulled off was pretty incredible. Mm-hmm. Um I would watch more from from this director. He and the actress who plays Jules have collaborated on like at least three other movies. Um, So I would check those out too and see what the deal is. Um, They both seem to like horror a lot. That said, I think Sydney's right. I don't know that I would watch this specific film again, but I would watch more from them. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it, I think four knives out of fives. Nice. Awesome. I'm glad that you didn't hate this, Sydney. <laughs> yes. It really could have gone a whole different way. I think that, okay, this is a little trivia piece. Originally, um, the director had written this as a hetero movie but- where Jackie was a man and Jules was like a more subservient gender norms wife. Um, and it was only in swapping the gender of the Jackie character um that the Jackie character's lines and personality really didn't change it's that like Jules evolved for them to be like a more even footing couple um I think that is really interesting and and I think that if this was a hetero movie it we would all hate it um yeah but but being a lesbian film truly put in a lot of heavy lifting here in a in a great way um that said I think that's that's not the only thing because I think um that element taken out and this film exactly as is otherwise would still be really good but I think that's like what allowed this film to blossom into something Mm -hmm. fun and watchable and totally discuss discussion worthy um and so I think that's that's part of why it was not a, a shit show for Sydney. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If this movie was like a heteronormative movie, I would have fucking hated it. No, oh yeah. It, it would, it would possibly be full dumpster fire trash. Oh yes. Yeah. It would have been Absolutely so bad. A garbage can. <laughs> I just simply am no longer um, at a time in my life where I want to watch a man hunt a woman for two hours. I don't, it's not for me. It's not for me. But if it was a it woman hunting that. Man, they hate to see a girl boss winning, and I'm rooting for her. <laughs> you know what? Good for her. Good for her. <laughs> so, this is bringing us to our final week in Pride Week, right? Mm-hmm. Our last Pride episode. I can't believe it. It's gone by so quickly, but don't worry. The spirit continues on in the pod every episode so don't you don't you worry for a second um but what is our final film who wants to introduce it me (laughs) we are back to vampires baby and we are doing uh one of the best 80s movies just ever made ever and it's the lost boys it is it has both Corys in it. It has young Kiefer Sutherland, like young Kiefer. No, my little little Keith Keith. <laughs> oh, <God. you> know? <laughs> and it's just like all the good things about 80s movies and vampires and like subtle gay hints. One, everybody knows vampires gay. Like gay. any, mo- any gay. movie and about vampires, true. gay. <laughs> like, frankly, vampires and werewolves both very gay. Yeah, very gay. Big gay. I'm, I'm excited. Have you seen it, Monica? I have, at least in part, but it was okay. a really long time ago, and I just remember the vibes. I remember it being very red and dark, <laughs> and everyone being hot. <laughs> but I don't remember anything that happens. And con- honestly, that's all I need to know going in. Red light Chelsea? vibes. No, good. I've so never Chelsea, seen it. I was like, some one of you hasn't seen it, and it's it me. is Chelsea. Oh, Chelsea, you're Ooh. in for a literal treat. This film is delicious. 
And mm-hmm. also, um, our Pride Month has skewed unbelievably, extremely uh, women love women so far. So I'm glad at the last minute to <laughs> some uh, gay male representation into there. Because uh, they <laughs> in the final <laughs> hour. <laughs> yes, did yeah. we let our bias show 100%, but also uh, Pride Month is for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> I, for one, am stoked to see some gay men on screen, so love to see it, and I'm excited. <laughs> Our little fanfic moment just here with the gender swapped what keeps you alive. I think that should count. That counts. Yeah, it will count, especially pages. once it becomes a feature-length <laughs> film that you write. And I'll... Give me a few more years, and we'll be ready to do a remake. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. I can be uh, whatever female character there might be in it. You'll be, be Daniela. Oh, I'll be Daniela. I can be a drunk asshole with a bottle with a glass of wine. Hey, fellas, travel in paradise. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, incredible. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed listening to Spooky Tuesday. <laughs> if you liked what you hear, why not give us a five star review on Apple Podcast? We'd love to hear it. Or follow us on social media at spooky underscore Tuesday. We're getting real close to a thousand followers, y'all. So why not follow us on social media at spooky underscore Tuesday on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. That's it. (laughs) And uh, if you still are on Facebook and Tumblr, follow us at spooky Tuesday pod. Thank you for listening. Bye, Spooky. Spooky Tuesday was created by Monica Height, Sydney Thompson, and Chelsea Duff, and edited by Sydney Thompson. Our gorgeously spooky tunes are all thanks to Tamara Simons, who you can follow on Instagram at Captain Tamara. And our podcast art is by Mary Murphy, who you can find on Instagram at the underscore moon underscore OMG. I turned you into this monster. It's nature, not nurture.